Greetings, Count Gore Duvall here, and there is a new version of a familiar movie coming out, and I have the director, and we're talking about none other than John Carl Beekler, who's with us on Creature Feature to talk about his new film, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yes. Okay, I've got to ask, hasn't it been done into the ground? Why are you redoing this? Let me see. It's probably been made 37 times. Okay, so including mine. Yeah, okay. Thir so you went from 37. To, okay, 30. 37, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and I would say of the 37 times, there are two versions worthy of watching. And they are. And they are the Frederick March one, the original. Okay. And I would say the Dan Curtis Jack Palance collaboration, really? which is very good. Yeah, that's good. Um, right? And and. Oddly enough, they are very similar to the book, the novella, and perhaps that is why they were successful. And it has been a while since there has been a successful adaptation of the book. There's been many variations of the theme, and I thought it might be very interesting to do a contemporary version of the film, but remain as close to the book as I possibly could. That was the challenge. And I, I didn't really know how to do it until I was working with a very wonderful actor on a movie called The Eden Formula that I was directing. And when I started to work with him, I started to see how Je Jekyll and Hyde, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Hyde, could really begin to work. And that actor is Tony Todd. And I could see how I could contemporize the movie and make it relevant today. Uh, well, let's talk about, let's talk about what made Jekyll and Hyde work in its, con in its own contemporary period when it was first written. In, in the novella Jekyll and Hyde, Stevenson wrote about his time. He wrote about an uptight doctor who was concerned about scandal. And this is why he created Hyde, a person to hide behind, a person that would be uh, impervious to slander and scandal who could go out and drink and party and womanize, which would have been horrible for a Victorian gentleman. Uh, that kind of problem in adapting it to a contemporary story has plagued every production of it, so they would have to take liberties with that aspect of it. Well, so well, why is it a problem? Well, for example, when the, uh, uh, the movie was made uh, in uh, uh, recently with, well, not recently, but with Frederick March, they changed that aspect of it because you, you want to make a movie with a hero in it that you like. And that's sort of a sleazy thing to do in contemporary standards, even back in the 30s. It's contemporary, late, tw uh, late 20s, early 30s. Very sleazy to hide behind a guy that just wants to, uh, you know, have fun. So they made Jekyll's mission in life to find the purity of man's soul and to, to go for that. And so the adaptation that they made was that Jekyll was actually a very noble guy who uh, was seeking to find uh, the, the better side of man and as a result he ended up finding the lower side of man. Okay, yes. Uh, so people have, have had to take exception in order to adapt it. I mean. You're going to watch a movie, you want to watch uh, a hero, or at least you did at the time. Sure. Um, and I would say probably the Jack Palance movie uh, was almost a remake of, of the, uh, the, the earlier film. And they haven't really been uh, improved upon. Okay, so how, how did you come up, you, you, see, you, see, you see Tony Todd and you say, how, now how do you contemporize a Victorian problem? Well, first of all, uh, I make it contemporary Los Angeles. And then uh, my doctor, Jekyll, is a humanitarian, but he's not working for humanitarian purposes necessarily. He's, he's not looking to create a, a, a better person. What he's looking to do is correct congenital heart defects. He works in a huge company, a, a DNA testing company, mm -hmm. and he's working with uh, uh, nanotechnology, and they're attempting to correct uh, uh, problems in the higher primates, because in some I places... I take it that includes humans? Uh, 
Actually, human testing is not allowed at that level. Oh, okay. So they're testing chimpanzees to okay. correct congenital heart defects. And oddly enough, Jekyll has a congenital heart defect. And his father died when he was 55 years old, and Jekyll is coming of age, and he has uh, got the same problem. So he's working on this technology, hopefully to cure himself. And unfortunately, the FDA says you need 36 months of testing before you, you can go on humans he does it anyway and what it does is it makes him a more robust stronger individual but actually uh, uh, reverts him back to a more primitive version of himself and it, it makes him in many ways a paranoid schizophrenic he is completely unaware that he is Hyde he ah. knows Hyde he speaks to Hyde it, it, it has a similar conceit to Fight Club in that Sometimes they both appear on screen together, arguing with each other, fighting each other. Uh, it's, it's, it's really fun. Tony Todd versus Tony Todd. It's great. And with Tony, you have the ability to do this very soft, gentle, soulful man and this robust, angry creature. And one, one of the coolest things that ever happened is that when we were doing the post on the movie, uh, one of the women who was in charge of... Uh, creating all the foley that's the the, the footsteps and the mm -hmm. sound effects in the track she'd watch the movie like 50 times to try to you know come up with all the sounds and uh, we had lunch and she said to me you know tony's great he's always great but who did you get to play mr hyde <laughs> <laughs> so it works it works you really believe that they're two different characters two different people now, listen, did you do a lot of, of makeup and prosthetics and stuff like that? We did a ton of makeup and prosthetics, and there's also a ton of CGI in the movie. The, the thing is that um, Hyde, as in many versions of the previous movies, is not just one form of Hyde. He kind of advances as the movie advances. He becomes more brutal, more uh, almost more simian in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, he, he becomes almost... Uh, a, 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 a caveman. In fact, uh, Stevenson himself described Hyde as a troglodyte, and he, he actually became that. And then there's some altered states moments that you just you just can't avoid when you're you've got the state of the art you know uh, special effects that you do. You see Use it morphing and transforming, and it's it's really fun. Now, speaking about that, your background came up through special effects, didn't it? Absolutely. I, I became famous as a special effects and makeup and visual effects guy uh, before anybody let me direct a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, wh what made you turn from the make-believe to another form of make-believe, I guess? You know, the thing is, uh, when, when you do this sort of thing for a living, you have a passion for it. And I've known what I've wanted to do ever since I was six years old. I saw King Kong on TV. And from the time I saw King Kong, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I didn't know what an actor or a writer or a producer or a special effects guy does, but I wanted to do, to do that. And that's what I did. And I studied to do that. And I was actually trained as a filmmaker before I became a special effects artist. But, you know, I, I moved out to L.A. right after Star Wars, and that's when the explosion of special effects hit. So... I got jobs doing that. Yeah, and don't turn down the money, right? Yeah, well, and I love, I love it. I mean, I, I love to do special effects. I, I, my, my background is pretty much a fine artist. I, I sculpt, I paint, I mold, I cast. I like to figure out how to make things move, you know. And it's, it's another tool in, in an artist's palette to paint a picture on, on the screen. The more you know about the process, I think the, the, the more adept you are at filmmaking. So. If, if I, if I, I don't, I, at the time I was doing a lot of special effects for other people, I didn't know one single director that didn't want to know how to do what I was doing, you know, so that, that he could get his hands in it. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, and the way I think makeup effects is, there, there is no, or at least the way I did them, there was no learning ground greater towards being a filmmaker because you're there at the beginning developing the script. What can the creature do? What environment does it come from? What's it gonna look like? Uh, that, that'll determine uh, you know, what it can do in the movie. And then you have to 
uh, figure out how to photograph it, how to light it to best effect. And then through the, the principle of photography, you're then into post and you have to figure out what kind of sounds it makes. Mm -hmm. what, what is the, when you foliate it moving around, what kind of noise does skin like that make? You are involved in every aspect of filmmaking. And, and I'm, I sh I'm sure you've seen makeup effects artists becoming directors because once you're bitten by that bug, by, by going through the process, by, by going through the filmmaking process of every step, uh, pre-production, principal photography, post, you, you got to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, look at Tom Savini. I mean, he, he's a, an actor and a director, and he started doing uh, makeup and creature effects. Stan Winston's the same way. Uh, there, there are a lot of people. And now with CGI, it's a very similar uh, uh, procedure. I mean, they, they're involved in the development. They're involved in the principal photography. They've got their on-set supervisors, and they're involved heavily in post. And you're seeing a lot of great directors come up through that discipline as well. Going back to the movie, yeah. Jekyll and Hyde, when can my viewers see it? Well, we are actually, uh, it's, it's a very small independent movie. And, and a lot of people took an interest in it enough to say, let's try to take this thing out theatrically. And we are actually going out theatrically uh, September 29th. We're playing a few cities uh, in the Deep South. Uh, about 50 theaters, and if we do well, we have a, um, a huge uh, company that's going to come behind us and open up wide for Halloween. Uh, it will be a huge DVD release, uh, but we're hoping good things for the theatrical.